Yes, I've been to Florida multiple times actually, and I haven't been very shy about mentioning it in my videos. Florida is a hotspot for almost every single major theme park chain in the US, besides Six Flags and Cedar Fair, but obviously we know what they're actually known for, Disney and Universal. And originally I was gonna do a video just comparing the two, but I decided to let the whole game come along and play. So today we're gonna rank every single park in Florida from Magic Kingdom to good old fun spot. This is a pretty big video because I have every single coaster YouTuber that I know that's been to Florida and whose ego isn't too big that they wouldn't want to work with me. This is going to be a pretty long one because there's quite a few parks we got to get to, so I'm just going to head right in. Real quick though, I do want to say there's one major omission and that's Fun Spot Kissimmee. This has Mind Blower and it looks pretty solid for the size of the park, but I think we can all agree that it doesn't stack up to the big boys in Florida because coming in dead last is... So before I actually start the video, I just want to say I've reviewed a lot of these parks and this happens to be one of them. This isn't necessarily a bad park for what it is, but that's the problem. It is what it is. This is basically a half step up from your average carnival. It's not a traveling fair, but it's like one of those those ones that like open up seasonally, like with a twister and a pirate ship and a drop tower or something. That's what this is, but there's also a roller coaster. I will say though, as much crap as Funspot gets, it's a fairly clean park. I mean, look at these pathways and the rides. That's not just clean for the picture. That's what it's always like. It's shocking to me that this park is so clean on a day-to-day -day basis because when you think of Funspot, you think of this like dirt cheap place that's already falling apart, but then you arrive and it's glossy. It almost makes you trust getting on that sky coaster, but then you realize you're still at Funspot America here, so. But Funspot is a pretty chill place to go after the parks or on an off day. It won't blow your mind. It's not gonna change the way you view amusement parks forever. Honestly, you might not even be enjoying it that much while you're there, but it's a good way to kill time. It's not essential. White Lightning is all right, but not great. Freedom Flyer is also all right, but not great. And honestly, the go-karts are the best thing that they have there, but it's not too expensive and you might have a little fun. Maybe, I don't know, go watch a full review. Three out of 10, moving on. We interrupt this broadcast to inform you that there's a very silly, controversial, and seemingly stupid opinion coming right up. This is another one that I have a review up on my channel. Flying solo again for this park, but don't worry, we got someone for the next park. Now, if you're a fan of this channel, you'll know that I really don't like this park very much at all. And I will admit, I did go on a very bad day. A lot of my complaints about this park were about the operations, so let's take operations out of the equation. Even though the one time I went to the park and I was actually old enough to form memories, the operations were abysmal, we're going to pretend that the ops were on point, or at least that they're average. Even if I put operations aside, I really don't like this park that much still. I don't think it stands up to universal quality at all because don't worry, I really do like islands. It's just kind of weird that this was the original of those two universal Orlando parks, but this is the laughing stock of it. This park has three rides that I genuinely enjoy. Revenge of the Mummy, the Rip Ride Rocket, and Transformers. Everything else in the park is ass. Minions is ass. Jimmy Fallon, ass. Men in Black, okay, that, that, that one's passable, but still the Simpsons, I'm not even gonna talk about this. This is this is garbage. This is beyond ass. I want to take another second to define the term screen ride. A screen ride is any ride that uses a screen as the main form of storytelling. Now there can be rides that utilize screens that are not screen rides. That being said, why are there so many screen rides here? Minions, Transformers, Simpsons, you'd think they start to chillax a little, but no, Gringotts, Jimmy Fallon, Fast and Furious, like, come on. The only ride with strictly physical sets and not a screen in sight is the Rip Ride Rocket and Men in Black. Look, I don't mind screens on rides. They just have to be incorporated well. This is a good incorporation of screens. The main draw is the physical sets, but the screens aid in storytelling. It's interacting with the set. It's not just a rectangular cutout and it's not the main ride system. This is good. Put me on a theater and theming it to Simpsons and then the Minions and then Jimmy Fallon is not good. That's lazy and stupid and dumb. I mean, obviously there are some positives to this park. It's not awful. I think the Rip Ride Rocket is criminally underrated. The music aspect of it is the crucial detail that people constantly overlook, but it's a complete game changer. I love the vertical lift to the semi-steep drop into the massive non-inverting loop. I love the building interaction and the fact that City Walk is literally right there, a step away from the back of the layout. I don't know. I just really like this ride and I think people don't give it the credit it deserves. I also really like Mummy. While I haven't ridden the famous back left or whatever, the row I was on was pretty fun. It's a fun ride that combines dark ride with coaster. Probably the best out of any ride out there. It's a well-themed but still thrilling actual coaster. I wouldn't even call it a family coaster. This is a genuine real coaster that's a half step down from Rip Ride Rocket, but a full step up from Gringotts. And then there's Men in Black. In my review, I think I talked a lot of trash about this ride, but I gotta say, this ride 
is actually pretty good. The physical sets here are great, and it's probably my third favorite shooting dark ride besides Buzz Lightyear and Toy Story Mania. The only thing is, I don't really like how you spin like crazy at the end. It just kind of seems out of place in a ride like this, but other than that, this ride is a highlight of the park. Overall, I'd probably give this park a 5.5 out of 10. I know I talk a lot of trash about this park, but I think it's actually pretty okay. It's just got some tough competition in Florida. Honestly, I think Universal should have put Velocicoaster here instead of what? Islands. I heard Velocicoaster. No, 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 that, that's later. But while I have you here, let's talk Disney, because I know you like to talk about that on the On The Hunt podcast. What do you think about Animal Kingdom? What about it? Just it in general, because it's taking the number seven spot. Animal Kingdom? It's an incredible park. It immerses you into something that you don't see often in Disney parks, nature. It's overachieving themes of life and the natural world give it to a distinct park atmosphere that no other park can match. Out of all the parks in Orlando, this has the most unique feel because a lot of the time, it doesn't even feel like you're in a theme park. The theme lands themselves also lend themselves nicely to these overachieving themes. It's so cool to see how nature is represented differently in Africa and in Asia and the rides that tie into the two different countries perfectly. Expedition Everest in the Asia section is genius because it's a way to naturally put a big mountain coaster without it feeling out of place. And the Kilimanjaro Safari in the Africa section is just genius. There's no other way to put it. Even the artificial lands feel real. Pandora's attention to detail in every island, every plant, every rock makes you forget that this came from a construction zone. The only land that doesn't fit the nature mold is Dino Land USA. This land needs a refurbishment because honestly, it just looks like ass. I get what they were going for with the whole fairground thing, but I, no, it's, 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 it's ass. Of course you have Dinosaur, which is a really good Jeep ride. And I wanna say it's great, okay. but Indiana Jones in California is just so much better. So this in comparison almost seems outdated. I think that's the biggest downside of the park. Park, the rides. There's just not enough of them. Expedition Everest, Pandora, Kilimanjaro Safaris, Dinosaur, and the Rapids. Everything else is just filler. Dumbo is filler. The Navi River is too short to be a real ride, so it's filler. The park atmosphere, the theme lands, and some of the rides it does have are great, but there's just not enough. Five rides is not worth a Disney ticket. I feel like with one more land or one or two more quality rides, this park would be incredible, but right now, the quantity is holding it back. Probably the most underrated park in Florida. I feel like this park is critically misunderstood by everyone. It's not about the roller coasters. It's about the water. I know that sounds stupid, so let me explain. This has always felt like a themed water park to me. Almost every attraction has something to do with the water in one way or another. Whether it be soaking wet in Infinity Falls, the lake interactions on Mako, the splash tones in pretty much every show, or the splash down on Journey to Atlantis. There's water everywhere. You shouldn't go to the park just to go on the roller coasters and head out. You're not going to get the full experience. The roller coasters will play a big fact in your enjoyment because Mako is incredible, but you should see the park for everything else it has to offer. I know SeaWorld is trying to stray away from the animals, but I think it really does make the park unique. When going to theme parks, I'm used to seeing lions, monkeys, maybe even a tiger, but at no other park do I see penguins or seals. I will say though, it's tough watching the shows now. After seeing the Blackfish documentary, it's difficult seeing a sea lion doing tricks and not wondering how they got to that point. I'm sure the animals are well taken care of, especially now that they got exposed, but I don't know. It's still tough to watch and not have that lingering thought in the back of your mind. But I know what you want me to talk about, the roller coasters, and we'll just do that. Actually, it's not even going to be me. x Scream Throws, go ahead. SeaWorld's lineup is one of the most underrated out there. They don't have a surplus of rides, but the ones that they do have are some of the best of their class. Manta is a super fun and unique flying coaster with great guest interaction over the pathways and swooping down near the entrance. Kraken, though it is a little rough, is one of the better floorless coasters and offers a rare straight drop and a fun layout. Journey to Atlantis is also a lot of fun for less experienced riders and Super Grover's Boxcar Derby is a great coaster to get the kiddos started with. Finally, we have Mako. It's one of the best hypers out there on the planet. Mako is of course the headlining attraction and rightfully so. This ride delivers so much ejector airtime that it's almost cartoonish. The lineup really is the exact definition of quality over quantity. And especially now with the opening of Icebreaker and the Surf Coaster, it looks like there's going to be quality and quantity. So hey, I'll take it. However, if there's something I will say, this park needs one more good non-coaster ride. Right now, the only one I can think of is Infinity Falls. And while that's great and all, it literally had 110 wait minute when I went. I'm not waiting 110 minutes for a raft ride when Mako is literally right there. Maybe another ride incorporating water, maybe not, and they just build it over the water. I don't really care. I just think that after the next two coasters, they could really use something else to balance out the lineup. This is going to be a 7 out of 10 for me. I really like this park. So, I messed up. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, I was a little harsh in Epcot and putting it last in my ranking Disney video and saying everything else was vastly superior. I will say it's not one of my favorite parks in Florida. I think those would be the top three, but Epcot is still a great park and I'm much better than I gave it credit for. I want to talk about the countries first because those are just incredible. I went earlier this year during a food festival and if you got like 80 bucks to burn, this is a pretty good way of doing it. You get to go country to country and try different foods from each culture. All the food is so unique, but more importantly, all the food is delicious. Here's the full list of everything I got ranked from worst to best. I mean, I didn't even know what most of these foods were while I was eating them, much less before I got them. And yeah, I get this was probably the Americanized Disney play down version so that the food would be more appealing for the masses, but whatever. I like to think that I immersed myself in the culture or whatever. But obviously that's just during the food festivals. During the rest of the year, the countries are still great. The architecture, the smells, the music, the cast members dressed up, all of it makes you feel like you're really stepping from one country to the next. There's not a whole lot of rides here, but there doesn't need to be. Plus, it looks like we're getting the best ride in Epcot in the France Pavilion, so soon the rides will even be a plus for the countries. But there's a whole other side of Epcot that I really do not enjoy that much, the future side. Last time I went to Epcot, we spent pretty much the entire day doing our countries in the food festival, so I don't really have much new to say on the future side. I'll let Theme Park Media do the talking for that. Epcot's future side is basically Tomorrowland if it were supersized and looked less alien-like, more like what you could actually see in the future, hence the name. The architecture in this half of the park is on point, from the golf ball of a ride you see when you enter, to the Louvier looking pyramids of imagination. And we haven't even gotten to the rides yet. Epcot has an incredible one-two punch with Soren and Test Track. These are two of the best attractions in the whole resort, and offer thrill seekers and families alike two breathtaking attractions to enjoy. Beyond those, you also have the likes of Imagination, Spaceship Earth, Mission Space, Living with the Land, and The Seas with Nemo and Friends. One of my favorites. Spaceship Earth still holds up as one of the best dark rides, period. Mission Space was worked on by NASA to be as realistic as possible. Living with the Land is a relaxing journey away from the rest of the park. Nemo feels like a Disney dark ride with a universal twist, and imagination is absolutely insanity, which gives it a charm like no other. This is a super unique collection of rides that is almost all exclusive to Epcot with the exception of Sora. Clearly, I misjudged Epcot in my Disney Parks video, but I still think even now it has room to grow. I still don't like the sponsored rides and I still wish there were a few more rides in general, but that looks to be remedied in the near future. When Guardians opens up, this will probably jump up a couple spots, but for right now, I'm gonna keep it at number five. Seven out of 10 on this one again. While this might be the flagship Disney park, it's not my favorite. That being said, it is one of the best parks in Florida, and if you're only able to go to one park in all of Florida, I'd say probably go to this one. This is the quintessential theme park. It encapsulates that Disney magic almost perfectly, only second to the original Disneyland in California. If you can only go to one, then go to this one unless you're all about the roller coasters. In that case, just wait. But this lineup is pretty much stacked. You have pretty much all the classics that you've heard of with Peter Pan, Pirates, Small World, Haunted Mansion, yada yada yada. You've heard all these. The reason it's at number four is because this park needs something new. The last major ride this park got was Seven Dwarves Mine Train. And while that's cool and all, it's not like that good. But more importantly, it's the only ride at Magic Kingdom that, that feels modern. Everything else seems really old. While it's cool to have a lot of classics in the park, it almost seems like Disney just decided to stop caring about this park for a while. I mean, at Hollywood Studios, spoiler, that's my favorite Disney park, you have modern classics like Tower of Terror, Rise, Mickey Minnie's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure, and a bunch more. At Animal Kingdom, you have Flight of Passage that feels like the next generation of simulators, and Frozen at Epcot seems like the future of Disney boat rides. And then at Magic Kingdom, all the main rides are from the 70s. To some people, that's not a bad thing and I think these rides should be preserved and not cancelled but I also think you shouldn't have a park that was largely made up of rides from the last millennium. But aside from that, aside from the fact that the park doesn't have like any new rides, I actually think the park has the best themed lands out of all of the Disney parks. There's something so charming about having lands not themed around IPs but rather around concepts and ideas. Tomorrowland being about our ideal future even though it looks like out of Star Trek, Adventureland being about exploring the world, Frontier Town being about the Wild West popularized in so many movies and Fantasyland being about the worlds that we dream up. It's just also unique from one another. Another, makes Magic Kingdom different from all other Disney parks because rather than it just being a mesh of Toy Story Land meets Star Wars Land meets Muppets, you actually have a cohesive park that lets the visitor interpret what they want from the lands. But guys, I know you don't really care about that. You just care about the rides. So take it away, Theme Park Horizons. Magic Kingdom has some of Disney's most iconic rides ever, and that's for good reason. While many of these rides aren't original to the Florida park, the quality of these rides are definitely some of Disney's best. Splash Mountain is considered by many to be the greatest log flume ever built, Big Thunder Mountain has some of the most intricate rock work on any roller coaster, Buzz Lightyear is one of the most chaotically detailed shooting dark rides ever, Pirates is the blueprint for every boat ride ever built, 
and that's not even to mention all the other classic dark rides that this park packs in its lineup. Peter Pan has a unique twist on the dark ride formula, Little Mermaid is one of the most wholesome and most colorful rides out there, the Haunted Mansion is a masterclass on how to create ride atmosphere and story, and of course we can't forget about the legendary People Mover. Almost every ride here is iconic in its own way, and you'll rarely get off one without thoroughly enjoying it. This park also has the best Disney coaster collection out there, disregarding if Tron ever even opens. Space Mountain gives some unreal ejector airtime that needs to be experienced in person, and then of course there's Big Thunder Mountain and Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which are some of the best themed family coasters out there. Once Tron hopefully opens, this park will have another somewhat intense coaster like Space Mountain to add to its lineup. This is the park I've been trying to get to for a pretty long time. I guess I should probably explain. My family and I have been going to Florida once, sometimes twice a year. I don't even know, since I was like six. But we always stayed in Orlando because we had a house down there in the hot spot of theme parks. We were a 10 minute drive from Disney and 20 from Universal, so we didn't really feel the need to go anywhere else. Of course, I've been to Miami and other places besides that, but Tampa? No, that was just wannabe Orlando with the weird Bush Gardens place. Fast forward a couple years and now I'm a full blown enthusiast with Iron Gwazi in the works. Now BGT is one of my top parks I want to go out to because because of its super unique lineup of quality coasters. And I finally got there in April of this year and it definitely lived up to the hype, sort of. It lived up to the hype in the sense that it's one of my favorite parks, but not really because of the coasters. I have a whole video on that that's like a kind of review of it. It's mostly about Iron Gwazi, which still isn't open, but it also breaks down the lineup a little bit. I really like Shikura, Montu, Kumba, and obviously Cheetah Hunt, but nothing really there besides Cheetah Hunt really blew my mind. And even Cheetah Hunt didn't really blow it for the right reasons. I also have a video up on the Cheetah Hunt specifically, so go watch that if you haven't. It's my best video, probably besides this when this is finally out. But this park, like SeaWorld, is so much more than just the coasters. I will say the coasters are the main draw for this one, but there are a lot of other great things besides them. I really like the animals, the park atmosphere, the landscaping, even the theming in some sections. The park really does feel like a jungle with outposts scattered throughout it, giving you glimpses back into civilization and roller coasters. But while you're actually walking about the park, you're surrounded by trees, rock work, and animals. It really pulls you into this world that they're creating. But again, I know you guys only care about the coasters, so let's get to those. BGT has almost every type a coaster you could want. It has some of their best. It has what's regarded as the best B&M invert with Montu. It has one of the few remaining dive coasters without vest restraints, giving you ample airtime. Shikra, Iron Gwazi looks to be in the top three RMCs when that opens. And it has the best B&M sit-down coaster, Kumba. There's also the well-themed Cobra's Curse, the pure fun Cheetah Hunt, and the legendary Falcon's Fury. The presentation for each of these rides is also incredible. Every one of them has a grand ride entrance sign, a glimmering coat of paint, and more often than not, a lighting package for the nighttime spectacles. Even though the presentation might have one little impact on the overall park atmosphere, it really rounds out the experience to make it whole. Once Iron Gwazi opens, this park will truly have one of the best lineups in the country, and if not, the world. I'm not even gonna lie, the only reason this is up this high is because of the rides. From a theming perspective, yes, there's good theming at this park. Galaxy's Edge is obviously the highlight. There's something new to see everywhere you look, big and small in this, yada yada, whatever. You feel like you're stepping into Star Wars universe, and that's a good thing. But the theming is really no better than, say, Pandora, if it's even on that level. No, this park is just here because of the rides. This park is some of the best rides Disney has ever made, period, in all of its resorts. But you know the drills, I never get to talk about rides, my last guest will. Hollywood Studios is home to some of Disney's most technologically advanced rides ever. And accordingly, they are also some of the most immersive. It really feels like with every ride in the park, you're pulled into the movie, the TV show, the game, whatever it is the Imagineers want you to get lost in, you're gonna get lost in. You don't feel like an outsider peering into the world, you feel a part of it, along with some of the best characters in the Disney arsenal. Not only are the attractions immersive, but they're also some of Disney's highest quality. Thrill seekers will have an absolute blast at this park with Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, and Slinky Dog Dash. And if you don't like thrills, fear not, for there are many more incredible options like Star Tours, Toy Story Mania, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, and the flagship attraction of probably all of Walt Disney World right now, Rise of the Resistance. These rides are so good, I could literally spend hours talking about them, but I'll do my best to quickly sum them up here. Toy Story Mania is the shooting dark ride perfected. Tower of Terror is the most immersive drop tower in the game that also gives fantastic airtime. Rise of the Resistance and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway are two of the best dark rides, period. 
And Rock and Roller Coaster is an actually thrilling Disney coaster that will leave your blood pumping and possibly your head hurting from all of the Aerosmith. Nevertheless, it's still one of the best Disney coasters and not to be missed on a visit. This park is truly amazing, but it's only really one or two rides away from being the top. I'm gonna to give it a nine out of 10. So what is the top? What is the 10 out of 10? Because yeah, spoiler, this is a 10 out of 10. Well, the number one theme park in Florida is Islands. It's Islands. No, but for real, for real, this is the best. Just go out there, 10 out of 10 park, go.